Hey Mech Warriors, welcome to Bad Ben's Battle Mechs. I'm Bad Ben. And today I got a comparison between the Annihilator C Gosszilla and a Mad Cat Timberwolf Prime. And I know what you're thinking. It's not even a comparison. The uh, Gosszilla is a 100 ton monster with five Goss rifles. Nothing's going to beat that, right? I know, like Mad Cats, they're good mechs, but it's not going to beat a Gosszilla. That's instinct, right? That's what I thought, think. Um, then I started taking a look at these two mechs, and I found a couple reasons why a comparison might actually be kind of interesting. Um, so uh, let's actually take a look at these two mechs. Um, so, it, yeah, as I said, it has five Gauss rifles. Each can do 15 points of damage for a combined total of 75 points of damage. Its long range is 22. They have a minimum of two. Um, they do one heat each, so uh, heat is absolutely not a problem. The You could say that the Annihilator is overheated since it could can sink 20, and it only does five heat per turn. Um but these are all um, engine-free, weight-free, so it's not saving. You're not saving any weight by making them uh, singles or anything like that. So it is actually not overcooled. It is not losing anything. Therefore, its movement is an absolutely abysmal two-three. Uh, it has a standard fusion engine. It has case everywhere, of course, because it is a clan mech, and all clan mechs have case. Um, it has an unbelievable 64 uh, ammo for the Gauss rifles, meaning it can shoot all of its weapons, I think, 12.5 times. Um, Armor-wise, it has 216 points of armor spread over everywhere, and um, I don't know how much inner structure, but it's going to be more than the Mad Cat simply because it is a 100-ton mech. Right? So, that's the Annihilator. Uh, let's take a mad, look at the Mad Cat. Uh, if you add up all of its weapons, it actually does a massive 85 points of possible damage. And But that's, of course, if both LRM-20s um, hit with all of their LRMs, which they never do. Um, but, so, over... It, Overall, it has a possible more damage than the Annihilator. Um, Heat-wise, however, it is not able to... If you look at it, these... If you shoot both... Okay, yeah, heating is 34, so it can sink 34. If we add together two ER large lasers, that's 24. And um, the two ER medium lasers are uh, already at 34 heat, right? That's without shooting the LRMs at all or that medium pulse laser. Machine guns are heat-free, uh, but they are very, very short distance, right? So uh, it does, it can possibly do uh, more damage than the Annihilator in one round. It will probably overheat itself, however, doing so. The movement for the Mad Cat is far, far better. It has 5'8", which is actually pretty quick for a 75-ton mech. Um, it should be able to run circles around the Annihilator C Gosszilla. Um, Armor-wise, it has uh, 230 armor points overall, so it actually has more armor than the Gosszilla. If you look at the center torso, it has 36 armor points and 32 on the legs, whereas it has 20, the Godzilla has 29 and 26 on the legs. So actually, more armor points for the uh, Mad Cat. Inner structure, it has less than the Godzilla simply because it is a lighter mech, and that's how that works. Uh, for an engine, it has an XL Fusion engine, uh, which takes up more space. You can see there are XL Fusion engine parts in the center torso, and so they can be critted if the left and right torso are hit. And this brings me to the thing that really 
um, made me think, okay, this is a more interesting video than I th thought it might be. Uh, the battle value for the Mad Cat is 2737 versus uh, 2455 for the Gosszilla. I was actually incredibly surprised by that, that the that the Gosszilla is I think two hundred. What what is it exactly? Let's see. So it's two twenty seven thirty seven. So we'll do twenty seven thirty seven minus uh, twenty four fifty five. Twenty four fifty five. Two hundred and eighty two battle value more on the Mad Cat than the Gosszilla, right? Um, and so I was thinking, oh, if battle value is to be believed, right, uh, then this Mad Cat will wallop the 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 Gosszilla um, in a uh, comparison. So I got to doing the comparing, and I so this was what what this really is about is what. Do you trust instinct or battle value, right? Instinct tells us Annihilator Gosszilla is, you know, unstoppable. It's going to pound the Mad Cat into the ground. Battle value is trying to tell us, no, 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 no. This Mad Cat is worth more than the Gosszilla. So what are the results? First, let's talk about what tests I did. I ran... A hundred games for this, <laughs> all right? Different scenarios, 20 scenarios each, five different scenarios. So I wanted to give, um, first of all, scenarios that gave the Annihilator an advantage, uh, scenarios that gave the Mad Cat an advantage, scenarios that should be more equal, and um, working in teams, right? So I... For the first um, test, and I ran 20 games in each test, the first test I wanted to give the Gosszilla uh, advantage. And the advantage that I see the Gosszilla having is range, right? Um, it wants to keep the Mad Cat, who can do more damage at closer ranges and get within that minimum range at a distance. It wants to... so. Range is going to give the Annihilator C, in my opinion, an advantage over the Mad Cat. Right? The Mad Cat's going to have to close. So the first map uh, that I put them on is a two by two map, um, countryside or something. About it's a very standard trees, uh, water, and hills with a road as standard as a battle tech map usually gets. Um, so the first is a two by two and they would start at North and South. So the Mad Cat would have to cover the difference of two maps to close the range on the annihilator, meaning this should give the, the test should give the annihilator an advantage. The second one is um, a one, just one single map sheet. One of the countryside map sheets, very standard. Um, and give them a north-south start there. And this, I thought, should be uh, more even. The Mad Cat should be able to close that distance um, faster and get within the minimums, you know, get right up next to the Annihilator. Um, the third test that I did was on a single map sheet, the same map sheet, uh, countryside something, and gave them an anywhere start. So they wouldn't. So if the the Mad Cat could drop in very close to the um, Annihilator, if it wins advantage, but even when it doesn't win advantage, it, uh, win ugh, initiative, uh, if it doesn't win initiative, it could start right in the middle of the map, right? So it's going to be much closer to the Annihilator when it starts. So that's the third, the any start. And then I thought I would do team battle. So give them each a lance, the exact same lance, and see if that actually makes any difference uh, playing in a team. Um, right? Uh, and so I did two tests. I did one team test on a one-by-one -one map with a north-south start, 
and uh, team uh, tests on uh, two by two maps, so north south start. And I didn't do a team map with an anywhere start um, because I was getting tired of doing tests, and I thought I had a pretty good data pool by this point that showed uh, what I thought I wanted to show. So let's move on to the results of the tests. And so the first test is a long range test that should give Gosszilla an advantage. And these are the tests. This is game number one, game number two, and it goes on. And a one in green is a win, and a zero in red is a loss. So the very first game, Gosszilla beat the Timberwolf, but in game two, the Timberwolf uh, had a win. And then Gosszilla won three in a row, but the Timberwolf had another win at game six and game eight. Uh Gosilla taking one in the end, and then it goes pretty doop doop do it. I okay. So this is the one where Gosilla is supposed to have an advantage, right? But the Mad Cat seems to be keeping up, right? Mm, no. Uh, by the end, it was an absolutely wallop by Gosilla over the Mad Cat. Of course, this is the one that gives Gosilla an advantage in range, right, over the Mad Cat. 15 to 5, though. I mean, come on. Uh, it won 75% of the time. Uh, all right. So let's move on to test number two. This was a north start, south start on uh, just one map sheet, right? Um, uh, this should bring it a little more even, in my opinion, right? Maybe we'll see if battle value comes into play and the Mad Cat can pull out some wins, and it pulls out a few wins. Uh, but it is still an absolute walloping by the Gosszilla with a final score of 14-6, to 6, nearly as bad as when the Gosszilla had the two-map advantage. All right, so sheet... Uh, three brings us, so this is the any start. Can, so this is what I think should give a Mad Cat an advantage. It can drop in very close, you know, close the range fast. You know, <clears throat> let's see what happens. So the Mad Cat starts with a win, but Gazzilla comes in with two, and then, Another two wins for the Mad Cat, but three wins in a row for Gazzillo. Then it goes back and forth, one and one and one and one and one. Oh, a couple, three wins in a row now for the Mad Cat. Oh, and now we see that the Mad Cat actually did get an advantage and won 12 to 8 in the any start test. It isn't as big of a walloping as the Gazzilla gave to uh, the Mad Cat in the last two. Um, but it does show, okay, maybe battle value isn't always, you know, <laughs> wrong. Uh, but of course this isn't any start and that's not how we usually play these games, right? We don't usually start games just putting our mechs anywhere. And so this is a really unusual kind of, um, scenario. So we move on to teams. I decided to give them each a lance. And the lances I gave them are the mechs from the last comparison uh, video I did on the three brothers. The Griffin, Shadowhawk, and Wolverine. I gave each the Mad Cat and the Godzilla the exact same ones. The Shadowhawk 2H, the Wolverine 6R, and the Griffin 1N. And I wanted to see if they would... You know, how it would pan out. And so the first game is on a one-by-one -one map with teams. And let's see if this actually makes a difference. And so the Mad Cat comes out with three wins, but then the Annihilator has three wins. And then one for the Mad Cat, two for the Annihilator. Two for the Mad Cat, one for the Annihilator. 
And then three, four in a row for the Mad Cat. But four in a row for the Annihilator, bringing it to an incredible, absolute even match of 10 to 10. Um, so that brings us to the final. That is a team two by two. And um, this should give Godzilla an advantage. Um, and we see if we go... The Mad Cat did win some, but the Godzilla absolutely slaughtered the other team. No, it no, it didn't absolutely slaughter, but it did it did win the match twelve to eight. Um, so the teams definitely did bring a little more evenness to it, which is to be expected. You put more mechs, the the the, the relative battle value is going to be um, more negligible, right? But the Gosilla still pulled it off, right? So in the end, the Gosilla is our big winner with one, two, three wins and a tie, giving the Mad Cat only one win and a tie. Um, and so what do we learn from this? What we learn from this is don't trust battle value exclusively. This you should know this. It's not it's not super accurate, right? I think we all know that battle value isn't super accurate, and you absolutely have to look at the mechs that you're using and compare them uh, with your eyes and your senses <laughs> before. You know, you pit, you you say, oh, he's got a Godzilla. I'll take something heavy. I'll take something with more battle value. I'll take a Mad Cat. Okay. Um, what else? First of all, the Mad Cat Prime isn't a great Mad Cat. There are tons of different variants of Mad Cats, and I've run a few tests with different variants, and there are uh, scenarios where the Mad Cat comes out on top most of the time, especially when the Mad Cat gets jump jets. Um, then they are able to deal with the Annihilator a little better. Um, yeah, the Prime isn't a great, is not a great um, variant. It's the standard one, right? It's not supposed to be the great one. It's just this is the most standard one. These machine guns are almost useless on this mech. Right. Um, what else? Why else is this battle value not uh, living up to its number? This XL Fusion engine, it is way, way weaker than a standard Fusion engine. This takes up three slots in the center torso only. This takes up three slots in the center torso and two in each torso. The amount of engine crits that the Mad Cat gets is is higher uh, than the amount that the Annihilator gets, right? Despite the fact that the Mad Cat has more armor on the center torso, right? Uh, it's getting those engine crits on the side torsos. XL Fusion Engines. Uh, actually, if we go into Mega Mech, I've got it open here. It does take into account, so this is the Annihilator, this is Godzilla, and we can see its battle value. The It will take into account that an XL fusion engine has a lower battle value than um, the clan, than a standard fusion engine, right? This is 2393, and if we go up to the regular fusion engine, it jumps to 2455. So battle value does take into account that the um, engines are more fragile, but the amount of weight that you save, you can look. I that well here it's not so uh, drastic because it's only a 200 rated engine, but I get four more tons, uh, right? That's four ER medium lasers, or just four medium lasers, or whatever you know, uh, or more armor, um, but a way way weaker engine. Okay, and that's really uh, that is a big uh, problem for the Mad Cat. Another problem is the heating, uh, especially when it gets an engine hit. Right, 
then you get extra heating. I think it's five extra heating for each engine hit every turn. Um, and it already has heating problems, right? So um, the second, the other thing is about this, um, the damage on these Goss rifles is concentrated. You are putting 15 points of damage in one single area. The damage on the Mad Cat is spread out. The most, the most powerful weapon, the LRM-20s, which do on average about 12 points of damage, but only in five-point clusters. So no matter what, you're going to be spreading out that damage way more onto uh, your enemy's armor than if you have these Gauss rifles that, if you look, two Gauss rifle hits on any one torso is going in, is already going into the um, into the inner structure, and you're already getting crits. And if you're not losing XL fusion engines, you're losing SRM twenties, right? Or getting ammo explosions and um, other things. So the absolute the 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 big damage, those big numbers that you can dump in one section are going to give you a really big advantage um, over something that's going to be spreading out the damage that has a whole lot of weapons. You would need, you don't need to have all your, this is an extreme example. You don't need to have 15 Gauss rifle, uh, <laughs> five Gauss rifles on any, I think this is the only mech that has five Gauss rifles on it, right? But you do need a few weapons that are really going to punch big holes so that your smaller weapons can then go and get those crits once those big holes are punched in the armor, right? Um, I knew this wasn't fair from the beginning. I knew that the Mad Cow uh, wasn't going to uh, be able to beat Gosszilla. But what I really wanted to show was how um, how uh, battle value can be very deceiving, right? If you're playing with a game with somebody and you're only using battle value, there are definite ways to um, cheat that a little bit, right? You could get, you could pick up this one for two hundred and eighty. What did it say? Two hundred and eighty-two points uh, less uh, than the Mad Cat, and this is going to beat the Mad Cat. And it's going. This mech is going to beat most mechs uh, in between that the that range as well, right? This is, I would say, a little bit of a broken mech. I would say that, um, for one, Gauss rifles are undervalued in battle value, and XL engines are overvalued in battle value. Um, be very, very careful taking XL engines onto the table. Uh, they can be very fragile. Right? Um so, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this little comparison. Uh, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to see any other mechs compared like this in a whole series of tests, uh, just leave it in the comments, and maybe I'll get to it. So, uh, I hope to see you guys next time, and bye-bye.